Good morning comrades, or actually good evening, amazing sunset at the Nürburgring. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring. And today we're going to talk about a car that crashed, well, this one almost crashed in Brunchen, but actually a car of ours that actually got crashed in Brunchen, the Toyota GR Yaris. Yes, well, probably the crashed, almost crashed car in Brunchen will be featured on your channel. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I can show you the video. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can yeah. show it on your channel. But yeah. in any case, um, you have spotted this car already having some minor defects. And also Robert posted on his Instagram and we promise you we're going to elaborate more on what happened to the car. So since we are not uh, regular clickbaiters or we're not going to show you any crash footage because simply we don't have it. And even if we would have it out of respect for the driver, we wouldn't show it to you. But we still want to elaborate of, uh, on how it happened. What were the consequences when it comes to costs uh, regarding to the car and also the... Um, costs that uh, are associated with the actual that you have to pay to the Nürburgring because uh, probably some people are going to end up on this video who have never heard of Nürburgring before and uh, they still believe in certain myths that are unfortunately being spread by, uh, by old school people or whatever. But let's start with the basics. How did this happen? And this, how did this happen? That's this a good is, question. This is the brake pedal. Oh, the brake pedal. Yeah. Well, it actually nothing, had nothing to do with brakes. I think, I, I think once the sl slide initiated, I think there was a lot of break. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? How did the crash occur? Can you tell us, Pancake? No. Don't pee on the bumper because it's full of grass, okay, Pancake? Yes. That, that, that's, that, that's the new yard. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that could, could be. It. How did the crash occur? The car was coming down into Brunchen. Now, some people might say, oh, Brunchen, YouTube corner. This is where, this, that's the most dangerous corner in the world because so many people crash there. No, just because most, there are many people there. This means that many people are constantly filming and this is one when a crash occurs, then uh, you might be thinking like, oh, it happens quite often for the same reason why you might be thinking, oh, people crash always on the Nürburgring. No, because it's being emphasized on it doesn't mean that it happens so often. No, in any case, the car was coming down into Brunchen. It was being overtaken by another car, which was a GT3 RS, non-MR, as far as I can remember. Um, and the driver got uh, Panic. uh, yeah. panicked. Yeah, yeah panicked. he panicked and made him press in the clutch. And this makes the car unsettled, unstable. And as he was turning in into Brunchen, the car slid into the barrier. Now, this could be one of the reasons explaining why we, although we are car enthusiasts, but from business perspective, don't like manual cars. And maybe we should talk a bit about driving dynamics. Yeah, I think it's something really important to understand is it probably wasn't actually the pushing in of the clutch that caused the crash. It was the letting back out of the clutch. Because when, you, when, you, when you're driving a car, it's really all about balance. We talk about, I, I do a lot of stuff where I talk about trail braking and being smooth with a car, being smooth when you apply the brakes, firm but smooth being smooth with your steering inputs. And that's all about when you have a car on a limit, you're loading it up. And when you're at the apex of the turn, you want that car to be loaded as balanced as possible so that the car moves through it at the fastest rate possible, taking advantage of the grip on the front and the rear. If you do a sharp steering angle or a sharp steering input, when you're in a turn, you're going to unsettle that. When you, if you tap the brakes in a turn uh, and you do it very sharp, you're going to unsettle that. Mm -hmm. When you're in a turn and you're loaded up and you push in the clutch, you're taking the engine braking possibly or the throttle input that you're putting in to keep it balanced and you're eliminating that and you're going to a neutral standpoint where the car's just rolling and then if as a part of that panic moment you let out the clutch your car is completely loaded up mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you let out the clutch which you don't you're not rev matching it so in this case it wasn't rev matched and the clutch got let out and it shocked the tires and immediately hit brakes on both the front and the rear at the same time which moved weight to the front of the car which kicked the back of the car out. So you put more weight on the front and made the front turn mm -hmm. and then it let the back get loose and let the back swing around. And because it's an all wheel drive, it shocked both axles. Mm -hmm. If it was a rear wheel drive, it would have shocked the rear end and the rear end would have swung, but he still would have had more control probably from the front. But this was almost the worst case scenario where it just shocked both axles at once and the car lost control. Yes. So this is in short, what has happened now? Yes, the car was involved in an accident and went in a barrier, but slightly. The car managed to get off the track on its own power. As you could see, the car is still drivable. Perfectly fine, so when are we going for a lap with it? 
<laughs> I take it like this if they'd let us on. Yeah, if they would let us I on. I suspect the, that the inner the the fender liner might push into the wheel at speed. You know, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if we drive slow enough, like like a Dutch, <laughs> maybe we would be okay. But no, uh, car came off under its own power. Um, the barrier uh, damage was below two grand. Below I think. two grand. B yeah. Below yeah. Two, two grand. Now again, as mentioned previously, some people might end up on the, on this video uh, just randomly and. I want to address like a very important and very false claim that people still sometimes say when they make these videos about how much it costs to crash on the Nürburgring. They say it costs 15 grand, 20 grand because of the track closure. Now, there was no track closure involved in this, but believe me, in the last 20 years, 15 years, let's say as of now, you will not be charged with track closures. I have seen track closures. I have been involved no from perspective, it. from uh, like the spectator perspective, from up close people who were involved in track closures. You are not, you don't have to pay this much money or like no money at all for track closures if you would be yeah, causing one. What you do have to pay for is the barrier. Yeah. That's the, that's the most costly thing is the barrier. And depending on, you know, you think, okay, 10 meters of barrier is being replaced, but if the barrier is four rows high, that's 40 meters of barrier. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the cost comes in. Yes, exactly. And finally, because uh, some people saying, oh, Nebuchadnezzar is making so much money off the, the barrier costs. No, you, you break it, you buy it, you, you, buy it, you, uh, you pay what you break. But for the same reason, if you're going to crash on a public road, you're going to destroy a bus stop or like uh, some yep. light post, you will have to pay for it. Now, your insurance might cover it, and then this is another topic we're going to get into uh, regarding insurance, regarding deductibles, regarding access, and if you would maybe sometimes make sense to pay it out of your own pocket instead of involving insurance. Something else that's interesting that people might not know, because we have a lot of these. We have a, a book full of barrier damages because we, you know, we've damaged some barriers or our cars have. And when the Nürburgring sends the actual official invoice for the damage, mm -hmm. Net is the company who does the repairs. They actually have the Net invoice with it and there's no markup on it. So net bills the Nurburgring and the Nurburgring bills the end customer and it's all one to one. Exactly, exactly. So I think this is just important to address for, for people who might uh, have unfortunately wrong perception because of the previous misinformation out there on the Nurburgring. Now, when it comes to the car itself, what has been damaged? I mean, we can quickly go around it. Um, of course, minor fender bender. There is no fender at all on it. Um, this close to the headlight so i guess it's a blinker fluid right yeah so the so the <laughs> headlight got damaged the uh the washer tank is damaged we have crash bar damage it's damaged here yeah, basically so it's just yeah yeah so you can see it here yeah. but the thing is we have to replace this because of course it's if somebody else were to have an incident with this and it broke it could now based on the movement it could crack very easily or it could crack due to vibrations you know because the other mounting point is up here where fluid is mm -hmm. if it were to crack due to vibrations then we have a front tire here. We've got fluid going on the track. So this absolutely has to be replaced because it does have a crack and it, it doesn't stay in its mounting position anymore. Mm -hmm. yes. um, headlight, we actually had damage to the crash bar. So the crash bar has to be replaced. The grill's completely destroyed, the upper and lower grill. Um, obviously the front fender and the, or the front bumper and the front fender was pushed in. So the mounting points on the fender were broken. So that has to be replaced. There were some scratches on the front wheel uh, that we we're not even actually going to nitpick that we're, we've we've let that we go but brushed them yeah, you can you can yeah, see there's... little nicks but that's yeah. that's something we're not even going to bother with that's no big deal mm -hmm. suspension is intact uh, but then you come to the rear fender and you have some damage on the rear fender this luckily we'll just do a repaint on it and that'll go away mm -hmm. so um i mean it... you can see you can see the <laughs> <laughs> the barrier <laughs> i mean you can see a little bit here the wheels chipped we're not gonna we're not going to go anywhere on that. That's minor enough. Um, when, when we have damage on, the, on these wheels with ProTrack, we have to replace them. Mm -hmm. um, and when these ever end up going back to ProTrack or whatever, we need to give them back in the exact condition that they're in. So this is something that we're going to look the other way on because I assume little odds and ends are going to happen to it. Um, and this is something that can just be repainted and no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, it could have been a lot worse, of course, because oh, as mentioned, yeah. suspension is still intact, KW, uh, yep. Club Sport, three-way, um, the wheels, brakes, brakes, the wheels, the, uh, everything, all the, a lot all more. All the front suspicion, suspension, everything, yep. This side is only the bumper, so this side is pretty much intact, exactly. including the headlight, so it's all good. So we can move on and to... And the brake pedal. Oh yeah, the, the two-sided tape. We got we got to put new. Yeah, we need to put, put a new uh, brake pedal in. <laughs> now we're gonna move on now to the most interesting part, or for many people, is because you've been saying we are not going to be nitpicking, or we. Yeah. And uh, some people say like, 
again, uh, going back to the fact that uh, so, some misinformation. When I first came to the Nürburgring, there were lots of misinformations when it comes to the rental car companies. People were saying like, ah, oh, they make most money out of people crashing because they charge them way too much and this is how they make money on it. So I think it's a, very important to address how generally the crashes are being handled by majority of rental car companies. Right. We cannot speak on behalf of everyone, but this is how we I, are dealing with I do know that them. a lot of rental car companies will put stuff on insurance because I've heard them talk about it and things like mm -hmm. that. But one thing that we don't do is I, I can tell you that we've had some expensive things happen to cars. A lot of people don't know, but M2 has been crashed multiple times, big chunks. The GT2 has been crashed. The 720S was crashed. This Cupra had a pretty big hit on it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, we could go through a list of, of incidents that have happened, and I have not once made an insurance claim through Apex on any crash that we had, be it, be it 80,000 on a 720 or 2,000 on, I don't mm -hmm. know, a, a GT86 that rubs a barrier. Um, and so I made a video recently talking about uh, somebody that crashed our Polo and kind of just took off, or no, uh, crashed Clio. our Clio and disappeared. And um, in that, people, the, one of the biggest things in the comment sections was, well, don't you have insurance for that? Mm -hmm. You know, we're here on the Nürburgring and we're lucky to have insurance on these cars. And if I were to go and put an insurance claim on every incident that happened, eventually we won't have taxi insurance, we won't have rental car insurance, and that's ultimately going to affect the people who want to come to the Nürburgring and drive it. Many insurance companies are dropping the Nürburgring from private policies, so if you want to come with your own M3, you just all of a sudden got notice from your insurance company that you're no longer covered on the, on the Nürburgring. So one thing that we're preserving is the ability right now to even be able to get insurance to drive these cars. So in order for us to be able to let you rent this car, it has to be insured. If I start dropping claims, if Apex starts dropping claims on every single incident, we're going to lose that ability to insure the cars and we won't even be able to drive them anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing uh, that, that, that we take a lot of pride in is not actually making insurance claims. We have our excess. If we were running things in, I guess you could say, more corrupt way, yeah, we could actually clean up by saying, oh, 40000 for the Cayman you owe us for your crash, and then I turn around and, and claim it on insurance and I get double money. But that's going to ultimately kill our own business and, and take away the ability to share the fun on the Nürburgring. Uh, you know, pancakes going crazy over here, so. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's really why, uh, you know, I say we're not going to nitpick, we're not going to do that. Yeah, if this was going to insurance, we'd be like, this nick, that nick, this, that, the other. But we're not doing that, and we're ultimately trying to keep the costs as low and reasonable as we can for the customer. Mm -hmm. So all of these costs combined, uh, including the including the barrier damage, there was no recovery fee, and this, we're not going to disclose the exact cost out of respect for the driver, but it's uh, way below 10,000 euros. Way below. Yeah, way below 10,000 yeah. euros. Yeah. Uh, the biggest headache that we had with this is, of course, uh, also the waiting for the parts. Yeah, so again, yeah, the downtime yeah. and uh, again, going back to the fact that saying like, oh, companies make money with this. No, uh, we, again, we don't make money with this, but way below 10,000 euros. I think we lost probably more than double than 10,000 yeah, euros. The, on the, the issue is you have the rental car not working. Yes. And we're at a time where the track's opening, the borders are opening again. People are able to come to the Nürburgring and this car has been sitting for over a month. And so we actually end up losing more money on the fact that it's not running mm -hmm. and people lose an experience. You know, yeah. people, people make a planned trip to come and they lose an experience. And it's hard for us because we don't know exactly when the parts are going to come. They finally came yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, but it took yeah. more than a month, it took more than a month to get. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And we called all over to try and find anybody that could get a bumper and it just, just the, the, there was no access to them. She eating rocks again. <laughs> Probably. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Stop eating rocks. She's good with leave it. Yeah, she is. She is. In any case, <laughs> before we're going to turn it into dog content. Another dog vlog. Another dog vlog. Uh, one last thing probably to address. We, we've been saying again quite often, this is why we dislike manual cars because there's a lot of headache involved. Is this another drop in the bucket? It's actually funny. It's more than just manual cars because this goes back to when we really, when we first started Apex, we were like, what cars are we going to get? And we had all rear wheel drive or all front wheel drive. And so many people said, what about an all wheel drive Audi? What about this? And my response was always, all wheel drive is going to make you hit the wall faster. Yes. And it's going to give you more confidence than you need. And that was a comment that I made all the way through. But this car was so good that we just had to try it. Yeah. We just needed to get in there and try it. And yes, the cars, let, let's, let's talk about what's happened. I misshifted it. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a big chunk. Um, I know another customer that's misshifted it since yeah. then. I know a customer that spun it. 
Yeah. Um, and then this has happened, and this is all in a relatively short life because it's between repairs. The customer that spun it and misshifted it, those incidences had no uh, no negative effect. The car was fine afterwards. It didn't make any contact anywhere or anything like that. But that's a lot to have happen in a short window, and that fully goes along with our exact complaints about manual transmission cars and all-wheel drive cars, and they're coming to be perfectly true with this car. Mm -hmm. It's a great car. It's a fun car. But if you look on the Internet, you can see many instances of this car getting binned. Not this one, but of, yeah. of, uh, of Yaris is getting binned. And I see it going in a direction of being the next Magan. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, big big shoes to fill, but it yeah. very well could go that direction. Exactly. Well, especially if the price is once. Well, this is open. it. When it get, it's obtainable to, to younger people and young people, I'm sorry, but this is this is true. You know, um, a lot of young people push and get a car that's capable and maybe that's where they learn. You know, and sometimes you learn by big mistakes. And I see this as being a car that might go in that direction. It might be the modern car that younger people say, look, I've been dabbling with this and this and that. I'm going to get into a Yaris that's got some power and some excitement and maybe uh, learn the hard way a couple of times. But um, it definitely fulfills what my concerns were with, with uh, all-wheel drive, definitely fills the concerns that Misha had with manual transmission in one package. <laughs> exactly. So are we keeping it as a rental? or? It's hard for me. Um, uh, I know a lot of you guys have, have already booked this car. So anybody that's booked it is going to get to drive it yeah. without a doubt. Uh, th so that everybody knows, yeah, we're having internal discussions if we're going to continue this car as a uh, as a rental or if it's just going to become something that the Apex team gets to run and test and run hard and, and drive all the time on the Nürburgring. And, you know, so you guys will still always see it out there. Uh, maybe some track day taxis and things like that could be fun with it. Um, but, yeah, we're in debates as to not, what not, we should not, do. Not the race car, not the Dacia, not interested. <laughs> what about the Cooper? Are you going to drive that? Where yeah, when, when it's finished. Oh, the Cooper. Oh, it's actually at Monday. Getting, at Monday, yeah. yeah getting yeah, tough, yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it will be. I looked at it and I might race it. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, I, I think that's a, that covers it all. We just yeah. wanted to give you the, the yeah, the, our, the, the, the regular audience the update on what happened to the car, what are our thoughts, and in between some thoughts and like uh, background information about the misconceptions of crashing on the Nebuchadnezzar, how it's being handled, etc. So that's pretty much it. Um, the car should be back probably in two weeks. If that, I, I mean, really, it should be a week because yeah. all we're waiting on is the parts to be painted, so it should be back in a week. Mm -hmm. A week from, I mean, this video goes out essentially tomorrow, right? Yes. So it should be, it should be back in a week from tomorrow. So I think that that's in pretty good shape. And I have to say one thing. I was very critical of the car at the beginning. I, love, I loved how it drove. I loved the performance, but the seat height drove me nuts. Yes. And just getting in it now, driving it down from the parking, I was just happy again with the lower seat that we got, you know, lower seating position, everything like that. So I'm probably the most excited for it to come back because I'm going to be the first one lapping it. Uh, well, I'll be the second one then. So. <laughs> <laughs> in all reality, Misha's probably going to beat me because I'm going back to Florida again for a couple again? days. Again? <laughs> you didn't even tell me that. I always have to find it out in, in the video or some social media. But at least now I'm finding out in my own video that he's going to Florida. So there is that. Another SSC run. Ooh, probably saying too no, much. No, actually not. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, quick update, a long update. But uh, there was that. I'm going to go and uh, make sure that... Oh, Boris is taking care of pancake that she's not <laughs> that she's not eating rocks so there's good so there's that cool well see you next time bye, bye. guys